The Magnificent Troy, mythical or an actual ancient city? Until the end of the 19th century, Troy was associated with a place that existed only in the legends of Greek mythology. No one imagined that this was a real ancient city from the time of the Bronze Age. Legend has it that the city was besieged for 10 years, then conquered by the Greek army led by King Agamemnon. At the heart of this Trojan War, according to Homer's Iliad, was a woman. This is the kidnapped Helen, Queen of Sparta. She was abducted by Paris, son of the King of Troy, Priam. According to the Iliad, the gods constantly intervened to support the heroes on both sides of the conflict. In this video, we will embark on a quest for unraveling the exciting history of the ancient city of Troy. In 1870, the mythical Troy became a real historical place when the German archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann discovered the ruins of the city on the coast of Western Asia Minor. Whether the Trojan War really took place and whether the site in northwestern Turkey was the same as Troy is still a matter of dispute. To date, the location bears the name Hisarlik. Studies say that ancient Troy was established at least 2,700 years ago. Then, in fact, the ancient Greeks colonized the west coast of Turkey. In the 19th century, the theory of Troy from the Iliad seemed to be supported after the German businessman and archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann carried out a series of excavations at Hisarlik and came across treasures he claimed belonged to King Priam. Specialists believe that the Trojan War took place at the end of the Bronze Age. At that time, the Mycenaean civilization flourished in Greece. The representatives of this civilization built huge palaces, created new cities, their own alphabet, and a rich culture. The earliest dated accounts of this war come from Homer, who lived around the 8th century BC, which is to say, several centuries after the events. However, they seem to have been written down even later, probably in the 6th century BC, when a tyrant named Pisistratus ruled Athens. Homer's Iliad describes the events of the 10th year of the siege of Troy, specifically following a series of events that appear to take place over several weeks. The story goes that the siege did not go well for the Greek force sent to bring Queen Helen back to Sparta. The war puts both sides at an impasse due to the fact that the Greek forces cannot penetrate the city and the Trojans cannot push their enemies back to the sea. A number of key events are described in the poem. Particularly interesting is the duel between Paris and Menelaus, king of Sparta and husband of Helen. The stipulation is that the winner will receive Elena as a prize and that will put an end to the war. The gods, however, intervene and interrupt the duel before it is over. So the war continues. Toward the end of the poem, we witness another important duel between Achilles and the great Trojan warrior Hector. The Trojan knows that the Greek warrior is superior to him and makes three laps around Troy with Achilles in pursuit. However, the gods force him to stand against the Greek warrior and Achilles destroys him. A detailed video about the gods in Greek and Roman mythology can be found on our channel. The Iliad does not end with the destruction of Troy, as is commonly believed, but with a temporary truce, after which the battle most likely continues. The Odyssey, again a work by Homer, tells of the time after the destruction of the city by talking about the Greek hero Odysseus trying to get home. In a poetic form, it briefly mentions how the Greeks were able to penetrate Troy thanks to the famous Trojan horse presented as a gift representing a huge wooden structure hiding within itself the Greek army. Thus, the Greeks cunningly penetrated the city and while everyone was asleep, took it by surprise from the inside. The ruins of what is now called Hisarlik in Turkey and recognized as Troy have been inhabited since ancient times. According to the studies done by archaeologists, the city was inhabited more than 4,000 years ago. The first people arrived around 3,000 BC the inhabitants of Troy do not live in peace. Archaeology reveals that over the years the city was often destroyed and a new city was built on its ruins. An interesting fact is that Troy is not alone. At least 10 cities lie on top of each other, buried in different layers of the soil, said University of Amsterdam's researcher Gert Jan van Vindgarden. He says that archaeologists had to dig very deep to find the remains of only the first settlement. It happens to be a small town surrounded by a city wall of unhewn stone. A base relief of an unknown deity stands at its main gate. 
It is different from the Greek deities we know and welcomes the guests of the city. Troy gained popularity throughout the ancient world in the period after 2550 BC. The city raised a strong army and its strategic location led to a flourishing trade. The population of Troy rapidly grew wealthy. The boundaries of the city are also expanding significantly. The massive defensive wall was built made of cut rectangular stone blocks. A powerful citadel was also erected and the population lived in spacious stone houses with front and backyards. Excavating this level of Troy in 1873, Heinrich Schliemann discovered a great treasure. In his opinion, it belonged to King Priam. The impressive collection included weapons, gold, silver, copper, and bronze vessels, gold jewelry, including thousands of gold rings, as well as many other objects made of precious materials. These finds were found along the outside of the city wall, near a building that Schliemann suggests was the royal palace. Other researchers theorize that the discovered treasures are not part of the same hoard, but precious objects collected at the site over the years. In the decades that followed, this theory was confirmed, with items dating back to times older than Priam's. To this day, the exact size of the city is still debated. Another archaeologist, named Manfred Korfmann, who also studied the area, says that the excavations show the existence of a smaller city within the city. He also says that Troy had a large residential area under a heavily fortified citadel. As far as we know, the citadel was second to none, both in the region and in the whole of southeastern Europe. The problem with recognizing this city as Homer's Troy is the way it was abandoned. Cracks in its walls suggest that it was struck by an earthquake around 1300 BC. This event was most likely followed by an uprising or attack. Von Windgarten said signs of fire and destruction were visible, leading to the suggestion that there may have been some fighting. However, it appears that the earthquake caused the most damage. He suggests, however, that the city was rebuilt after its destruction by the same groups of people who inhabited it before, rather than by foreign Greek powers. It is assumed that around 1190 BC, the city ceased to exist. This is a time during which the Mycenaean civilization in Greece was already destroyed by the so-called Sea Peoples. Around 1000 BC, the city and its surroundings are again abandoned. It was occupied again in the 8th century BC, around the time Homer lived. The new settlers had no doubt that the place was the legendary Troy of legend, says von Windgarten. At a later stage, its inhabitants even took advantage of this fact to attract political support and ancient tourists. In its first centuries of development, Ilion was a modest settlement, pale in comparison to the grandeur of ancient Troy. Many scientists believe that people who moved to the city after 1000 BC are Greek colonists. However, this hypothesis was soon disputed. In the Oxford Journal of Archaeology, we find a published research carried out by a team of scientists which reveals that the Troy's amphora, thought to have been imported from Greece, is actually a local work. Much of the pottery discovered in Troy after 1000 BC also produced by the local population and not imported from Greece. This has led scholars in recent years to suggest that many of the people who returned to Troy may not have been Greek colonists, but rather people who returned to the area. Despite the expressed hypotheses and doubts, there are still facts of history that suggest that Troy or Ilion had a special status among the ancient people. The Persian king Xerxes traveling to conquer Greece, stopped to pay his respects to the city. Alexander the Great did the same in the 4th century BC. He also gave special status to the city in his empire. It is supposed that the city of the present Ilyani was for a time a mere village that had a temple of Athena, but once its greatness was known throughout the world, writes Strabo, who lived 2,000 years ago. The special importance of Troy continued during Roman rule. The Romans believed that Aeneas, one of the heroes of Troy, was the ancestor of Romulus and Remus, the legendary founders of ancient Rome. The townspeople capitalize on this mythology and make the town a popular destination for pilgrims and tourists. Troy thus became one of the largest eastern cities of the Roman Empire. The fall of Rome and the transition from antiquity to the Middle Ages, accompanied by civil wars and barbarian invasions, had a very adverse effect on the legendary city. A decline followed, as around the 13th century AD, the town is now reduced to a humble farming community. 
Recent DNA analyzes of the region reveal that humans finally left it around 800 years ago. One of the biggest questions that is still the basis of debate in the scientific community to this day is whether there was ever a Trojan War. If there was, are the remains found really of Troy? The only written records found in the city from the time these historical events are supposed to have taken place are in a language called Luwian, which came from the lands of the Hittites. Scientists say that the description of Troy in the legend strikingly coincides with the revealed real city. However, there are still many archaeological remains to be explored. It appears that during the Trojan War, Troy was destroyed by earthquakes and then settled by people from Southeast Europe, not Greece. Research continues today. Nowadays, Troy is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most popular tourist destinations visited in Turkey. The history of this ancient city continues to excite people from all over the world to this day. More similar videos you can find in our channel. Support us by sharing this video and subscribing to the channel.